Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese drama land in the past week and let's get right into it. First, we have a drama that airdropped this week and it's a drama that a lot of people thought should have gone live last month. Ai de Er Ba Ding Lu, She and Her Perfect Husband, a contemporary romantic drama led by Yang Mi and Xu Kai. If you still remember, it was initially gonna come out early October or something like that and then it announced like two days before its scheduled airing that they're gonna postpone it. Finally, it comes and it comes on the 14th this week. It was early that day in the morning the rumors started to happen on internet circulating saying the drama is gonna air tonight and it did. I've actually caught up with all the episodes. This is an interesting drama. Almost unanimously when you look at Chinese drama reviewer of this drama, it's all rant and criticism on it. And some of the points are very valid. And some of the other points, I do feel people are a little bit too hard to please. Then they're just looking for problems and faults in everything. So if you just go out with that, you know, like being a hammer, then everything is a nail. I have a more mixed opinion about this drama. You can look forward to a um, review specifically on this drama soon from Avenue X. Then we have only a couple of other things going on in drama and film land doesn't mean they're not exciting or interesting or <laughs> let's, let's leave it till the end. So the second piece of thing is regarding the short new released trailer of the film version of Xiang Jianyi, Someday or One Day. One of my favorite dramas in the last couple of years. The film version of this project has just started promoting and it's aimed at going to cinema next year. And this story will still feature the three main leading actor actresses from the drama. And the story is gonna take place in two cities. One is Taipei, the other is Shanghai. And <laughs> apart from the original cast, the really fun thing is they're gonna involve another mainland China actor in this project. And during this promotional event, they put out a blurred image of that actor with a question mark on top and saying this is a mainland actor that we are very happy to have him involved in this project uh, and they're keeping it a secret. But who am I, okay? I'm a drama watcher and I've watched too much dramas and I've seen too many photos of actors. Instantly, I recognized. It is an older photo from the actor Jing Shijia. And very quickly, it got proven because people actually found the photo that got blurred, right? The original one. And it's the same photo, you can tell. So Jin Shijia is actually involved in the film version of Someday or One Day. Yes! Thanks to this year earlier, March Under the Skin, that kind of made me reevaluate <laughs> the interesting point of this actor. And I didn't know that he's in the film version. So <laughs> making it even better. Shuang Chu Kuang Xi. It's an internet term in China, just meaning two things you like that are kind of unrelated suddenly showed up together in another person's thing. Anyway, very happy for that. Let's hope it's a great movie. Then we have a couple of projects that have wrapped shooting. One is Ming Long Shangnian, The Hope, the contemporary drama led by Zhang Ruoyun and directed by Ding Hei, who is the director of the police drama that was also led by Zhang Ruoyun earlier this year and really well received. So this is their very close next collaboration and I've introduced this project I believe at least once on my channel where Zhang Ruoyun plays a middle school teacher who leads his class to brighter future. It's the type of a uh, young blood boiling high school drama with a really cool teacher. If you watch a lot of early days Japanese dramas, you know what type of genre this is. I cannot wait to see Zhang Ruin taking a teacher's role on just using the uh, chalk on the blackboard. Then the other drama that has wrapped during this week is the since day one of filming have been followed <laughs> by paparazzi like crazy romantic drama based on an IP novel Total Tsangbuju Hidden Love led by Zhao Lusi and Chen Zheyuan. I've heard a little bit about its original novel. It's not very, let's say, up to date with today's standard of relationships, but as it gets adapted to screen, I believe they're gonna change a lot of settings of characters. So wait till it comes out and see if uh, the chemistry between these two can work 
Well, then during this week, the ITE drama Qing Qing Ri Chang New Life Begins runs into its first airing break. Finishing the first 18 episodes or so airing, take a couple of days break and then start to do airing again weekly. They did it pretty much like Tang Lan Jue's schedule. Because I bet ITE discovered this is the ideal way of airing a they think is gonna do well romantic drama. They got such a good feedback in performance from a uh, Love Between Fairy and Devil, so they're totally just repeating that on Qing Qing Ri Chang. So far, it's really been working very well. And this drama has managed to break 10,000 heat level within ITE's own algorithms calculation. That takes in view count, takes in peak time performance, takes in uh, live comment, comments, engagement. So we never know what actually is the algorithm that gives you this number, but not every drama can hit it within their own platform. I think this is the fourth one they've done this year, which is great achievement. First one is Lifelong Journey. Second one is, uh, I believe, Tang Lan Jue, Fairy and Devil. Third one was Fa Zui, Punishment. Now this one, so far, I really do think among all the airing drama platforms working today in China, Aichi has done the best in terms of getting the most amount of popular dramas this year so far. Unless some crazy shit happens in the next month and a half, Aichi would be the winner in terms of content quality, okay, not counting other things. So that actually concludes pretty much everything I want to talk about. Uh, about specific dramas. But then, but then there is a huge thing that happened in entertainment, which is at the very end of last week, on the day that my video goes out kind of situation, so I couldn't time jump to talk about it. But basically the highest film awards and the most weighted and most valuable, let's say, film awards within China has just happened, the Golden Rooster. It's the type of awards that every film actor works <laughs> their life to achieve. and. My audience, as you already know, okay. <laughs> if you've been with my channel for more than four years, you know. Hey, hey, hey. This time, best actor went to Zhu Yilong. Best actress went to Xi Meijuan. She is a much older actress, very veteran. And right now, there's a drama airing on Mango Television where she plays the Empress Dowager. So that's that actress. And then in terms of the other awards going to other people and projects, you can also just Google it. The nice thing about it is. There's one other thing apart from the leading actor <laughs> that definitely, you know, makes me feel really happy is that um, the best script writing goes to a female script writer. She is also the director of that project, which is Ai Qing Shenhua, a contemporary film that features a lot of famous actors and actresses. And mostly it's about sort of an observation of the different ideas about romantic relationships and love between the genders right now at this age, located in Shanghai, pretty much fully with dialect spoken. This project, Ai Qing Shenhua, I think the English title is Be For Busy. When it went into cinema in China, it was very well received. A lot of uh, audiences gave it really positive rating. And it's great to see it's an original creation coming from somebody who is not so well known. Her name is Shao Yihui. So she is the scriptwriter plus the young director of this project. And she got the Golden Rooster for scriptwriting. And then the film that Zhu Yilong leads, the gave him this award, uh, 人生大事, uh, Light Up the Star, I think that's the English title. Anyway, it's actually the funeral business film. Also is a low budget. Overall budget is only 60 million RMB. That's like smaller than most of the period dramas these days. Done by a very sort of young and not so well-known team. Type of smaller projects are getting more noticed and getting more major awards. Good direction for creative work to go down that route. But considering cinema in the last couple of years, uh, every year it just gets worse in China. So overall, the picture is not very prosperous and hopeful. But for the couple of projects that got awards, it's a good sign. <laughs> a very tiny, tiny hope of flame at this stage. Fei Sheng, Zhu Yilong, Fei Sheng. Uh, that's the word we use for Xiu Xian, cultivation. So when you fly and Elevate. It's the type of word we use for <laughs> if you are a human, right? You cultivate, cultivate, and then you fish on, you become a god, you become um, immortal. And for him, uh, on internet, people saying he's an actor who f is the first actor who got famous through 
a BL adaptation drama and he mostly was a drama actor, he wasn't a film star who managed to come from that type of background and then after a couple of years of picking projects and moving around and doing stuff ended up in the cinema world and got the highest award possible within China He's the only one so far who's done that and because of how BL adaptation right now is locked in a fridge situation it's unlikely that it's gonna get repeated anytime soon by anyone else even a co-star Bai Yu mostly because film and television still belong to a kind of separated areas in a way and to get a film award you first have to be in the film and there aren't that many good film projects going on honestly it's very hard for anybody to be able to get involved in a proper project these days let alone getting awards from it so likely Zhu Long is gonna be the only actor who achieves that jump anytime soon you know I don't see a competitor or possibility of another person doing that and we really don't have that many candidates think about the couple of actors who got known through BL adaptation there are like only a handful for anybody who's been a fan of his since Guardian or even earlier I doubt there are many people from even earlier because he really made his name now in 2018 you know, we know that, I know that <laughs> if you know any entanglement of my channel and da 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 fandom bloodshed uh, you will know it's pretty interesting moment <laughs> to be remembered in both drama land history, film land history and Avenue X's channel history and my own experience of doing this for last five year and a half we've witnessed the process of the first facial let's see if in the future i don't know how long this channel is gonna exist in this world but <laughs> see if we can get another one as up new access youtube channel keeps going these are the things i want to mention that has happened in drama land entertainment film land however you call it in china thank you for watching i'll be next i'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long happy drama watching